Hi there, welcome to the another video of our course that is Software Engineering. Here in this video, we are going to discuss about structure design and how to draw structure chart. In our previous video, we have discussed about the BFD and we have also seen few examples where we try to draw DFD for given problem. So here in this video, we are going to discuss about what exactly structure design is and what are the techniques that we can use to draw structure chart and what are the different types of symbols that we can use to draw our structure chart. So the main aim of structured design is to transform the result of structure analysis that is BFD into a structure chart. So during the structure analysis, first we need to identify high level function and then we need to represent those function into DFD. So after drawing the DFD, then we need to convert DFD into structure chart. So during the structure design, we need to convert the DFD into structure chart. So to draw or to transform the DFD into a structure chart, we can use two strategies. First one is transform analysis and second one is transaction analysis. So using these two strategies or using one of these strategies, we can transform DFD into a structure chart. In our upcoming videos, we are going to discuss transform analysis and transaction analysis in detail. But in this video, we are going to discuss about what we are going to discuss about what exactly the structure chart is and what are the different types of symbols that we can use to draw structure chart. So the main aim of a structure chart is to represent the different module of a system and the data and control flow between module. So during the modularizations, first we need to identify the high level module and this high level module further have sub modules. So during structure chart, we can represent those modules and we can also represent the flow of data and flow of control between modules or among modules. So the first symbols that we can use to draw our structure chart is module and it can be represented using this rectangular box and the one module have sub module so we can represent it like this and one thing you need to remember we can represent this library module like this so the main difference between module and library module is that so the library module can be called by any module any time so this library module can be can be represented using this symbol and the simple modules can be represented using this rectangular box and this is how we can represent module of a system using structure chart so suppose we want to represent the condition so we can use this diamond symbol to represent condition so this is a module and based upon some condition this module are calling this module or this module so if the if there if we want to check some condition and based upon those condition one module can call another module then we can represent those condition using this diamond box and another symbol that is loop and it can be represented using this curve error and this loop means repetition so this module is calling itself multiple time when some modules are calling itself multiple time then we can use to then we can represent those module using this curve arrow and it is known as loop so repetition can be represented using this type of error in dfd module so another type of symbols that we can use or that we can use in our structure chart is these two symbols. 
so this symbol is used to represent the data flow so this is this symbol is used to represent the data flow and this arrow represent the direction of data flow so and another symbols that we use to represent the flow of control is this so this symbol is used to represent the flow of control from one module to another module there is a little difference between data flow and data flow and control flow is data flow is represented like this and control flow is represented like this and in this label we need to mention the type of control and here in this label we need to labels we need to represent the data so these are the few symbols that we can use to draw our structure chart now we are going to see the example of structure chart for an email server so here i am directly giving you the structure chart or i am directly presenting you the structure chart for email server but first you need to draw data flow diagram then we can convert those convert data flow into structure chart using structure using transactional analysis or transform analysis but here for showing how our structure chart will look so i am going to use this example so this is an example of a structure chart for an email server so our first module is enter login detail module so which is responsible for collecting information from the users and this module passing the login data login details or data to another module that is verify login details so this verify login detail is responsible for verifying whether the user is authenticate users or not so this verify module login detail module take the help of composite compose in database module so here it it pass the login data and it it pass the control that is control information that is okay or not if if the data are okay then this control will pass and based upon this control the another module will call and this module is view mailbox so this view mailbox is the module this module call this two module based upon some condition so here we are representing the condition and if users want to view the message then this module will call and if users want to compose the message this module will call so here the compose message can call itself multiple time so here we are represented using loops and the compose message after we after that we can call another module that is send message so this is the brief or example where we are trying to represent the email server in form of structure chart in our next video we are going to discuss about how to transform dfd into structure chart using two strategies first one is transaction and transform analysis so thank you for watching this video see you in next